I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Thanks for joining us at the Azure Academy once again, continuing our migration series. We're talking about the new version of Azure Migrate, and we covered in our last video the discovery and assessment side. And now today we want to dig into the actual replication and migration. So please take a moment to click on that subscribe button. It helps us out uh, tremendously at the Azure Academy to keep making videos for you and give us some comments below on questions that you have or things that you're interested it in and we'll be happy to make those videos for you. So in the past, Azure Site Recovery was the tool that we would use for doing migrations or disaster recovery. So there is a change now where Azure Migrate is going to be your migration tool. Don't worry about Azure Site Recovery for migration scenarios. All that happens behind the scenes, under the covers. You just worry about Azure Migrate for disaster recovery scenarios from on-prem to Azure or Azure to Azure scenarios. That's where Azure Site Recovery will be the tool that you work with. So jumping over to the Azure portal, so we want to open up Azure Migrate, and for that we're just going to search in the top bar here for Azure Migrate, and we'll open that up. So in our last video, we had added a assessment and a migration tool. If you did not do that, then you can click at the bottom here to add your migration tool for whichever tool you want, either the Azure Migrate natively or any of our third parties. And then you can click on the Discover button and then select whichever workload you have. I have Hyper-V. And then which region you want to move to in Azure. And I'm going to take East US. And then we confirm that our target region is for East US by checking our box here. And then we hit Create Resources. So now we have to click on this Download button. And there is our file. And I've copied that file over to my Hyper-V host desktop. And now I'll also click on the download link here to download the Azure Site Recovery provider. Okay, and let's install Azure Site Recovery here. And then I'll choose to install it with updates enabled. And the default install location is fine with me. And this will just take a few minutes. All right, and now we've got all of our systems registered and now we need our file. So we'll hit register and browse to our vault file, which is on my desktop. And it's fetched all of our vault settings. So let's hit next. And we're going to continue without a proxy. If you do need a proxy, then put in all of your details. And our server has been successfully registered, so we'll click Finish. All right, and now back on our Migrate Tools screen, we've got now the Finalize Registration button. If you do not see this after the steps have all completed, just hit the Refresh and then come back in. So I'm going to click on Finalize Registration. So this should take 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, and our registration has been finalized. Let's proceed with the replication. So we'll click on Replicate here, and then we select which workload we have. This is Hyper-V, and then we hit Next. Then we select which assessment we want to use or do this manually. So if we do this manually, then you're going to just select which systems you want and click next. But I'm going to choose from my assessment and we'll select our group and which assessment we want to use. And I'll move my on-prem and domain controller. I'll leave my Azure Migrate Appliance on-prem. We'll hit next. And then we'll select our resource group to migrate these into and I'll go to my landing zone and I'll choose a storage account here for the replication data and I've got one here for AA migrate landing zone and then for our virtual network I'll be putting them in my hub and then I'll be putting them in next app zero and I will be using the Azure hybrid use benefit which you can do if you have software assurance and we'll hit next to pick our compute and we see what our source core count and memory output is from our assessment. And now I want to actually show you that I can select whatever size VM that I want. Okay, So if I want to go with what the assessment gave me, then we have these values here pre-populated. Otherwise, I can just change this to be anything I want. So for this guy, I'll change him to a B2MS. I like that size. And then for this guy, uh, we'll go with a F2S. Okay, and then of course, select which operating systems you have and then select your OS disk. In the case of a system that has multiple disks, you just have to pick which one is the operating system disk. For me, that's DC1. And if you don't have multiple disks, then that'll be pre-selected for you. And let's hit next. So here's one of the things that is great about Azure Migrate is that if you pick a VM size that is not a supported configuration from what you have on-prem, in my case, I have too many disks. So B2MS only supports four data disks and I've got five. So I can't use this size. So it's telling me here that I need to pick a new size that's going to support that. 
and if you're uncertain on which size uh, works and if we're talking about something like disk that information may not be readily available here so there is our Azure documentation which shows every VM size and what sizes have which number of disks supported so I'm going to go with the F4S V2 so I'll click that and we'll hit next for our disks okay now here we have the option to select which disks we want to replicate to Azure now in the case of my on-prem I only have one but for my domain controller here I have multiple data disks if you choose to not replicate some disks of course this could impact whatever was going on on that operating system so be aware of whatever selections you choose to not bring with you that that's not going to have an adverse effect on how the system functions or what people are expecting but I'm just going to replicate all of them and we'll hit next and then we here's our review of what we're doing we're going to this subscription to my landing zone resource group in the East US to my hub network and the Azure hybrid benefit has been applied so we'll hit replicate so let's take a look back at our Hyper-V server right and we can see that our server has been registered with our two VMs and they are now in the process of sending their initial replication data now of course the big question is how long is this going to take well that depends of course on the size of the VMs what else is going on the size of your pipe between you and Azure are you replicating over the public internet are you replicating over Express route or a site-to-site -site VPN so a lot of factors that come into play for how long this is going to take to process so let's jump back over to the portal okay and you can see down here we've got two servers that are replicating over to Azure so we'll have to wait for this to complete uh, the initial replication before we can go to the next step which is testing and doing a full migration so this will just take a few minutes so while we're waiting let's look at our overview of our migration process and we can see here we've got our two systems that we're migrating and they're currently healthy and migrating their information so let's click on replicate more and then you could of course repeat the process add more systems to your workload using your assessment data just like we did before and then you can see that our two systems that we had here originally are now gone because they're already replicating and then you can replicate whatever other systems you have since that's my Azure migrate appliance I'm gonna leave him alone and over here on the left we can look at which systems we are replicating and what their percentage is of being synchronized and under the infrastructure servers here this is our Hyper-V box and then we can see our infrastructure jobs which is enabling replication for each of our systems and then the individual events and this will be coming into play later when we do the actual test and migration so again once this process is complete with the initial replication and then we'll proceed with the next step so our replication process has been completed successfully and let me give you a look at our machines here so they're both in a protected healthy state test migration has never been performed if we click on our systems here we do get to see an overview of what's going on and we do have an issue that we'll look at in a second but first uh, just to give you a look around so status of migration test never performed we do have a config issue here's our last synchronization time we get an ID for the VM what the OS is where all of the replication target information is targeted VM size and then we can also look at the compute and network to see some of our other details as well as the disk configuration to see which disk you have protected so we're ready to do our test so let's click the test migration button and we can pick either one of our VMs to do our test we'll click the ellipse here and click test migration I'll just do it for our on-prem box and we'll move him over to our hub network and do our test and if we go to our notification we see starting test for our on-prem system so clicking our notification we're taken over to our job and we're seeing that our failover is in progress and we can also see that same menu if we're back in Azure migrate in our migration tools overview and we can see our jobs over here on the left and we can see there's again our failover in progress for our on-prem system and it's just a matter of waiting for the system to be spun up in Azure and let's look at what we've got in our landing zone and there's our test VM of course labeled with test because this is a test failover and at this point you could review your configuration make sure everything is just the way that you expected it to be and then once you're satisfied with that then you can go on to the next step and back in our overview screen here we see that we have one cleanup 
pending from our test. And to perform that cleanup, we go over to replicated machines. We can see that our status is cleanup test failover pending. And over in the ellipse here, click on the cleanup test migration and put in your notes and then check the box for testing is complete, delete virtual machine and click the clean up test button, All right? So that's going to kick off another job here and you can watch that job over in the side and this will take a few minutes to clean up the job. All right, and our test was cleaned up successfully. And if we look back at our resource group and all of our resources are gone. Now we want to perform the actual migration. So we'll click on our migrate button and this time we'll select both of our systems and we'll hit migrate. And then we have our migration job starting up for both of our systems. And looking at our jobs here, we have a failure for DC1 and we knew that we had a network card issue. And now we get some of the recommendations for how to go ahead and correct that. And we're we're told here to configure the target network on the compute and networking blade for the VM. So let's go over to there. We'll go back to our overview to replicated machines to DC one compute and network. All right, so there's our problem. We had a do not create set up for this private network adapter. So I'm gonna click edit here. So our issue here is that we need a primary network adapter. Since we have two, we need a primary and then the other one would be the secondary. But if we try to set this to be secondary, then we see that there's another error here. And it says the selected virtual machine size does not support the number of network interfaces indicated for failover. So we need a different VM size, one that supports multiple NICs. You can see, here we've got one NIC selected and we need a system that can support two NICs as well as at least five drives. So for that we're going to go back to our VM size sheet and we see that the F8S V2 supports the, a number of disks that'll fit as well as a number of network adapters. All right now that we've saved that config we're ready to try again for this computer and we'll click on migrate and we'll shut down the system. We'll hit migrate and we can see our job is starting. If we look back at our first job, we see that we've shut down the VM on-prem, prepped for failover, and the failover is currently in progress. Let's check our other job, and this is in the process of shutting down the VM. So if we look back at our Hyper-V server, and there we can see the status of both of those VMs is now off. Going back to Azure, and we're preparing for the failover, so this should be good now and our failover is now beginning for this system. So now we just have to wait for both of them to spin up in the cloud. And we'll be able to see that in our landing zone resource group once they are online. Okay, our first VM has failed over successfully and that took just over 20 minutes to complete. And there it is in our resource group, all ready to go. So it'll just take a few minutes for our domain controller to finish. Okay, and our other system has now finished. Back to our landing zone resource group and we'll refresh. And there's all of our disks and our VM. And back in our overview, we can see our status. Two virtual machines have been migrated, no other issues found. And from here, you can just repeat the process. So we go and we discover our new systems and then create groups from that, perform our assessment so we know how we want them to be configured in the cloud. And then we add them as replicated items so we get them protected and then perform the migration. You can do that as a test to make sure that your box comes up first and that everything is healthy and then perform the actual migration. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at the new Azure Migrate as we went through our replication and migration processes and moved our workloads up to the cloud. So we'll definitely be back to talk about Azure Migrate again in this uh, mini series as part of our migration learning path, including VMware database migration, app services. We'll even cover some stuff around Databox. And I'm sure that the Azure Migrate service will grow as time goes on. Please click on the subscribe button if you haven't done that already. It really does help us out a lot. And then also also click on the like button if this was a good video and leave us a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for new videos. We'd like to make stuff that you are all interested in. And thanks very much for joining us today. Happy learning.